Hi, my name is Dr. Michael Veslak. I'm a chiropractor in Camarillo, California, and I'm certified functional medicine practitioner and board certified in integrative medicine. Last week we talked about leaky gut, and today we're going to talk about how we come about that diagnosis and a different lab test that we use from Cyrex Labs, they're basically doing the most advanced lab tests in the country. We're going to talk about Array 2, 3, and 4, which we commonly use in our office. So first off, there are basically four barriers in our body that should never be permeable. The first is the skin, the lungs, the brain, and the gut. So leaky gut is a term that describes when the membrane and the lining of the gut becomes more permeable. So our cells around our intestinal wall, the mucosa, are tightly packed. They form what we call tight junctions. That, so when we ingest food, the protein molecules go down through our system. It's set up so nothing can pass through the body. But at times, these tight junctions begin to um, separate just a little bit, making that wall permeable. And then these protein molecules circulate the body, and then antibodies through the body tend to recognize this as foreign invaders and can create inflammation throughout different parts of the body. So we, when we use the Cyrex labs, we basically are evaluating three antibodies to determine if leaky gut is present. The first antibody is occludin and zonulin. These are bridges that form between the cell walls, and we know there's degradation of these bridges that leaky gut has begun to occur, and these molecules begin to circulate through the bloodstream. The second antibody that we test for is act actomyosin IgA. And when this is present, it means there is severe cell wall destruction. And uh, then the intestinal cell walls have really begun to break down. A much more uh, serious, takes longer to fix type of condition. And the third antibody is um, it's an antibody to lipopolysaccharides, which is basically a film layer over the mucosa of the cell membrane that prevents these nutrients to pass through uh, the cell wall. Any one of these if present, suggests a leaky gut diagnosis. Uh, the other test we run is Array 3. So in this test, we are basically looking for wheat and or gluten sensitivity. Uh, the normal test that most uh, people run, uh, they test only for one component of the wheat molecule, and this test specifically tests for 20 something different types of the wheat molecule. Um, it's more than the gliadin type IgA, which is the only test usually run um, when you go to your doctor and he tells you you are not gluten sensitive. So we check all the components of the wheat molecule to see where and if your body is gluten sensitive. So uh, many chronic conditions, as you know, are a result of autoimmunity and a direct result of this leaky gut type syndrome. So it, um, if any of these um, are found through the body, that means our body is finding these pathogens as foreign invaders and begins to attack it. So you're going to have markers, the IgA and the IgG marker. Um, <clears throat> Array 3 also tests for something called transglutaminase, and it tests for transglutaminase 2, 3, and 6. And what these basically suggest is if these are present in your bloodstream or on the Array 3 test, that you have an autoimmunity to either your gut, your skin, and or your nervous system, depending on which one is positive. So it really allows us to get to the root cause and figure out the best way to sort, support your body when we figure which wheat molecule is actually causing the issue and then if you already have an autoimmune issue. The final array is, that we test for is Cyrex Array 4. And this is really important because there are certain foods that we commonly eat that cross-react with gluten. And by this I mean that they have a very similar molecular structure as gluten and our body has a hard time differentiate, differentiating between the gluten and these other molecules. So some of the cross-reactive foods are cow's milk, cheese, chocolate, um, rye, oats, corn, rice. So a lot of things that we eat on a common basis, potato, coffee, and um, we can't restrict it all from our diet otherwise we're not going to eat anything. So what we like to do is test this 
Cyrex 4 determine which food we need to avoid while we start to heal that leaky gut and then possibly in three and six months reintroduce these foods see if your body reacts to see if you can include these again so some common symptoms of leaky gut are you going to have bloating or abdominal distension um, sometimes you can go between diarrhea and or constipation fatigue is common depression anxiety irritability uh, joint pain is a real common symptom we see here in inflammation uh, cold hands and feet are oftentimes a complaint as well as uh, you can either gain weight or lose weight and of course there are many more that uh, um, I'm sure some of you are familiar with. Uh, thank you uh, for listening and uh, thank you.